Welcome back, everybody, to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is a social media takeover this morning. And to most people, you know what? Social media influencers have the dream job. Mm -hmm. The work they do seems easy, and the contributions they make seem to be only to their benefit. But despite this public opinion, an influencer to faces many challenges in their career journey, some which we may never ever see, ever see. So today, we uncover the seemingly glamorous life of social media stardom and hear from the influencers themselves what it takes to survive and thrive in this cutthroat an often taxing job. Now, our panel consists of professional dancer and content creator Kelly Kicks. We have fitness and lifestyle entrepreneur Rushda Moseji, as well as entertainer and media personality La Sizwe Dambuza. Now, we encourage you at home to join in on the discussion and share your thoughts and experiences with us via a voice note. And that WhatsApp line is 063-408-8863. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's start our Red Table Talk. I'm kidding. It's not going to be that serious, but it's an important narrative to actually make sure that we know the humans behind the influencing. You do understand that when you see this, you're like, oh my word, they're funny, they're fit, they're running an empire, oh, I love these people, and yes, you do, but the thing is, we have to also consider the humanity behind what they do. Now, Rushta, Asizwe, Kelly, uh, yes. your grilling begins, I'm kidding, it's not <laughs> like that. Um, but Rushta, let's start with yes. this concept of influencer. I think it's Ooh. a word that gets used loosely, it gets mm. amended here and there. I think it's a notorious word. It is, yeah. it, isn't it? So what I is think... that word to you? Um, I think in South Africa, a lot of people throw it around to insult uh, what they think people do. Yeah. And um, it's often a term that I don't like to hear. Um, people associated with um, individuals and people that they see at every single function and event that get freebies and eat for free at restaurants and post their outfits. So they think it's like a lazy job or whatever. Mm. But you must remember we all influence someone else. So being influential is not a negative thing. And it depends on what your vision and your mission is of your influence. And mine is health and fitness, women empowerment. Yes. What am I instigating? So yes, I'm not an influencer, but I am influential with my message. And if I'm doing good, then I can sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. Put that on your CV, say it a bit louder for the people at the back. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you were content creator before it became a thing, before it became a career. But speak to us about the challenges, because like, like I said, a lot of people see what you guys do as easy, as fun, as you're not working hard, but it, it does <sighs> come with a lot of challenges. So I've also worked in the film industry, which I think so you can understand a bit of content creation a little bit more than the normal person that just okay. like, posts a, a video on yeah. social media and just in, doing it for enjoyment. Um, I don't think people realize the amount of work and effort that we put into it and the planning that goes into making content and how to make it actually fit with who you are and being authentic in the same breath. Yeah. But also it's like there's so much things happening and like Rushta as well said, there's so many different influences, not influences coming in, but like what is the word I'm even looking for? Um, opinions coming in about this is what an influencer is, this is what we do, it's easy. We are basically an entire film crew that you would see on a set of Expresso doing a video as one man alone. And one day when you can afford to actually do it and you make your name and you build your yes. brand, you can afford to actually yeah. employ others. So we are actually also creating work, work in the process, but the difficulty is that we're doing everything on our own. But it's something that we enjoy. We wouldn't do it if we weren't enjoying it. And it should also be treated as a normal job and be respected as such as well. The same way a doctor would study for yeah. seven, eight, ten years to get their MDs or their doctors. We do the same. We're studying, we are practicing our crafts, but we're doing it with the same diligence, but also we I think we should get the respect we deserve, but I, we, not, we don't really expect it because we just enjoy what we do. Articulated beautifully from, mm -hmm. from both your sides. And I think what you are echoing is the fact that how do you get taken seriously in this yes. occupation? As creatives. And, and that's the most important thing here. Last is where I know that in terms of brands, organizations yep. approaching you, uh, in terms of making sure that that is a thing that happens regularly, you know, you have to make sure that whatever you do, it must articulate this air of, I am a professional creator. Yep. I'm not just somebody who found a phone and now I'm famous. <laughs> so how do you navigate that space? It's simple. You have to have morals, you have to have a decorum, and you just need to know what you want to do. The moment you start being popular and your numbers start growing, there's mm. brands that just will approach you. So if you're going to be a fitness model, yeah. um, you can't now be working with sunflower cooking oil. <laughs> <laughs> 
doesn't make sense. I mean, it could. If you're smearing it on your body while doing fitness. <laughs> creative. So that's where I think um, the, 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 the influencing starts being tricky because mm. now you see an influencer that says, no, guys, I'm a fitness model, I'm a dancer, here, here, here. Mm. But you're seeing her there at Mam Kugu's <laughs> shop. You, know, it, you have to you have to pick a struggle, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that as influencers we need to kind of figure out is what our, what is our niche, how we're going to work on. And speaking on myself, um, for example, I can't work yeah. on a men's brand because I don't appeal to that market. You know, I'm wearing a full. Full HD lace wig. <laughs> HD. 32 inch. Even. A full face beat on. You know? <laughs> that means that I can't, if now I'm doing that, that means that I'm confusing my brand, I'm confusing the market. And you need to figure out which, which one is which one. Mm. Mm. Uh, what I wanted to ask you from a mom at a mom myself, you know, how do you set boundaries for yourself? Because I know what you do is you don't uh, expose your children on social media. You put a little emoji on that. Why was that so important for you to protect your children in this space that, you, that you're living in? Uh, well, I feel that my space is something that I created for my brand. And that was, it's not my kids. I didn't ask their permission. And, and if one day when they decide they want to have an Instagram account or a TikTok, they can go ahead and do that. But it's not, it's not my place to expose them on that level. Mm. Um, as a parent, it's my responsibility to protect my kids and to be that guardian for them. And that's my main priority. So I would never expose them to the public. It's, it's, people are, mm, it's very cutthroat. Cool. It's um, quite crazy out there, you know. You yeah. all know. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just as overprotective about my niece as well. I'm just like, can I? It's, it's, you, you know what's happening yeah. in the world. And you just want to protect your family and protect your people mm. and make sure that nothing bad happens to them. So it also comes with the territory. Mm. So this is a beautiful discussion. I actually want to bring this over to another part too. If you have any comments, please share that via voice note 0634088863 as we continue to navigate the world of social media. But of course, there are certain platforms like TikTok. They have to have an origin. Where does it come from? Let's find out. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso. You're live in S3, and we are chatting about something so, so important. I know you see individuals called influencers, but it's not just glitz and glam and Instaglam. We're continuing this conversation for the benefit of the humans behind the content that we so richly uh, deserve. And, of course, we scrolled through it, and it kept us sane during lockdown. So we have to give uh, these content creators the uh, respect they deserve. And this is why we need to channel through the cutthroat industry that they work in. We encourage you at home to join in on the uh, conversation. As always, share your thoughts and experiences with us via voice notes, 63 8863 In fact, talking about voice notes, let's start there. Sandra, you were first to send us a voice note. Let's take a listen. Morning, team. At Express a morning show. Good morning. So uh, the discussion that you're talking about, about the social media, I would rather block someone, I would rather block and delete than to leave social media or unfollow social media because the person is making me uncomfortable. So I would prefer if I block and delete them forever, that would be good for my own sanity. Mm. Thank you, Tim. That's a very, very good way of, of <laughs> handling the mental health yes. factors of social media. Khotso, you also had one. Hey, Expresso team, this is Khotso Plikao. How do I deal with the social media impact of my mental health? You block. There are over 7 billion people on this earth, and Instagram has not even discovered half of them. If there's a few negativity, block and you move on and you discover new people. Anyway, do follow me on social media. Have a great day. Love the show. Thank you. We love you too. Thanks a lot for weighing in. Our panel standing by. Let's continue this conversation. It is vitally important that we have this particular discussion. As we heard over there, block. Yes. Block. Block. Is this, are we in agreement with the Listen, block thing? We, I have a whole block list. Block on a WhatsApp, block <laughs> on a Facebook, block, block on a Twitter, block, 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 block,
The moment I feel you're being negative on my page, Excel doom you. Yes. The moment I think that you're going to throw in negativity, Excel. <laughs> and we think they. You, you know, and this is actually a very important thing, and I, I'm sure that many people would understand that sometimes you have these videos, like this is where you're one of them, where you yes. have these characters. But now you're doing your own thing. You are buying, let's just say you're buying milk. I'm not sure if you buy milk or if you're vegan. <laughs> almond or... milk. Oh, sorry, almond milk. Okay, let me change up. We you, don't do dairy. Almond, yeah. almond milk is being purchased and you're in the store. Yes. Uh, is there pressure? You know, because I have also been confronted many times about somebody's like, don't you want to do that thing quickly, man? Yes. Don't you want to go do, where's that Noma Tranquency thing that oh, you don't want to go see it quickly, man? Oh. I want to know what the pressure's like there and how you navigate that personal space where all you want to do is get some almond milk. <laughs> You know, I'd, I, I've just learned to understand that when you are in the limelight, you have to find a switch within yeah. yourself yeah. where it just switches on and switches off. You know, so the moment I'm buying milk, um, almond. Almond, there we go, yes. thank you. And someone says, hey, take it, baby. Nah, and Hi, baby, how are you? You know, which is a lot of work. Yes. Mm. But it's the same as a policeman that wakes up in the morning, mm. wears his uniform, yeah. and goes to do his job. Yes. yes. So it's my job at the end of the day, when you see me, you must say, I know my chicken, see, please. Can you say, yeah, decliner? Unfortunately, I hate yeah, decliner. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what people love, you know, and what yes. they do. Yes. So, it's my job. And they, they support you. Yeah, and yeah. and you, you can't, you have that responsibility to them to uphold how they feel about you when mm. they meet you. If somebody's meeting you with the energy, you have to reciprocate that energy. Yes. You can't just be like, Yep. Yes, I'm buying my own milk. Yeah, or like, <laughs> no, I don't want to take a pick. Yeah. True. Imagine. Yeah. How, who do you think you are? Yes. Like, it, it, it uh. comes, you, you chose to put your life in yes. the public eye. Mm. So these are the consequences <laughs> that it comes with its consequences. <laughs> yes, I got that. That works. Okay, but let's let's touch on this for a second, Rushta. In terms of the the humanity mm. that you have, you are still a human. Mm. Do you do you sometimes find that that can be disregarded because of, course. of what we're talking about here? Mm. Yes, of course. Have yes. you ever found that from your side? Um, especially when there's a monetary exchange yes. and people, for example, I've got an e-commerce business, so yes, people you. buy a product. They buy a product, they follow a diet, they download the app. They, they feel like they own a part of you. Mm. So they're not just viewing your stuff, they are also make you... They, yeah, so they are entitled mm. yes. to some of you. There's a share. Uh, yeah. there's, there's a, they feel like, okay, mm. because now, you know, I know your personal life, I know mm. who yeah. you kiss on your life, yes. now we want to know your scoop. And, and that's the, I feel, what's, what's important you become to an object. is, yeah. Yeah, is mm. the fact that if, if you're a consumer of any of their content, remember that there's a human behind it. Mm. And remember that they will show you that type of energy. I also believe that if you have spent some time subscribing to any of their brands or even Expresso, I would like to reciprocate in some way as well if I do see you out and about. And you can feel that from the panel too, which is wonderful. Uh, so I want to make sure that that's outright. But of course, if we are consumers of their brand, also remember if you want to give them a moment to get almond milk, that's also okay. You don't have to shout from across the aisles. You can also just let them buy the almond milk. Now, Kelly, just yes. a quick one. When people think that influencers just get VIP drops, oh. you know, unboxing video after unboxing video. Oh my word, they've got a new car. It's probably a sponsorship. Those types of stigmas that are attached to what you do. Um, how do you navigate that space in order to, I'm not going to say defend yourself, but create clarity? I mean, okay, for talking for myself, every creator is very different. So there are newer creators that do go yeah. for the freebies because they are still learning. So we give them that leeway, learn, figure it out, yes. make your mistakes, learn, grow. I am a very fussy person. I am super fussy. I, I already had that, you, we spoke about it in the yes. previous one. I've started like way before and I've grown up making the mistakes to the point that I'm like, hey, if we're doing something, this is work now. Because interaction, in yeah. person, great. I'm human, I'm still a person. But when we're talking about a work interaction, a work interaction stays work. So you have to also separate the two. Yeah. But when it comes to events, like I go, I have fun. That's where you can network, that's where you can meet new people create content with new friends and like 
try and build your brand as your individual, but also networking and finding people that's in your industry, in your niche, that you can also yeah. not leverage off, but kind of inspire and like reciprocate with as well. Yes. But the freebies, I don't, I mean, if PR companies are sending their packages, great, but you're not obliged yeah. to make any posts. If you don't want to, if you really love the brand, I would say go ahead. And not everything we post is a paid promo. If we love, Lindy Lynn's clothing. Yeah. I'm going to go and buy Lindy Lynn's clothing and I'm going to wear it. It doesn't mean she paid me for it. It means I spent my own money. You can put out what you love. It doesn't always need to be specific to, ah, I'm an influencer mm -hmm. and these other things. Do what you love and be authentic. Just letting you know. Right, these are hard workers. If you don't believe me, Rushta, if you don't <laughs> mind showcasing that hard work for us on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, along with Jamie Lee standing by for you. We can't wait to get the fitness workout. And do remember our panel will still be here. Questions 063-408-8863. We are ready to push the Rush Tush. Let's do it. It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show, Espresso here on S3. And if you missed out on our other two parts of our conversation, we are navigating the world of social media and the conversations around influencers, their humanity. There is hard work behind what these content creators do, and we have to make sure that we acknowledge that in a very, very cutthroat and very, very taxing industry that they are in as well. We encourage you to always connect. If you've got any questions, any thoughts, if you want to share something, clarify something for yourself, 0634. 08863. In fact, we have a few. Now, let's start off with uh, Brian. You had a message. I experienced a team. Mr. Super handles uh, the mental health issues with um, social media taking off two or three days every week. Otherwise, you get over the whelm with everyone's lives and them sharing it and you not doing it. And then, um, you know, five or ten minutes a day in the morning and the evening. And uh, that way, I'm far more, more relaxed about uh, and uh, more healthy mentally. Okay, cheers. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, Lisa's up next. What do you have to say? Hi, this is Lisa here, commenting on the social media pressure. Yes, as a model, I did felt a lot of social media pressure because I felt like other models my age were doing more than I am, gaining more followers and likes every day than I am. So I had to do everything and anything that I could do so that I could get more followers and more likes. I had to go through my savings for a perfect photo shoot and perfect clothes, which really messed up my life and it still affects me even today. Thank you very much. There was a lot of vulnerability you shared with us and I appreciate that because I can guarantee you our panel knows all about it and this is why we welcome them back to the couch to further discuss the humanity behind this industry. I mean, you heard from Lisa there. Yeah. The pressures mm -hmm. are real because let's just say if you're a carpenter, you can make a better table. Definitely. But can you make a better you the next day? Yeah. You, are, you are vulnerable as human beings. Your ebbs and flows of your life will be showcased in everything that you put out there, which is so important Same. to note. So I feel like it's, it's just a vital thing to chat about this. But let's continue, shall we? Now, Rushta, mm. when it comes to you know, your brand and you know, you've got a multi-dimensional brand, there's so many things that you encounter. Do you find that that particular thing can perhaps limit you from organic sort of posting? Because you know you have a certain set of things. I am about woman empowerment, yes. wellness. A workout, uh, a, an eating plan, the, mm. so a, a little recipe. There we go. So um, anything that strays out of that for organic post, do you, mm. do you find yourself limited in that world at all? I think that it's important because the, the consumer, we are bombarded with so much information. Yes. And at the same time, there are a lot of brands and things that are using yeah. that platform to subconsciously bombard us further. A lot of it comes across inauthentic, um, which is a word that we speak about often, authentic, auth yes. mm. authentic inauthentic. Yeah. Um, consumers are smarter than that and they can see through it. So when you are forcing um, robotical information scheduled every single time or at a certain time, people get numb to it, they switch off. Yeah. So you need to be um, you need to think about it a lot less. Because if you're overthinking how you're posting, what you're posting, and do things that are too curated in terms of, I find with myself and fitness, it can get a bit boring and people see through that. So you want to kind of be just 
on the fly, a little bit more casual, a little bit more effortless. They want to see more of you and less of what you're trying to say. If that makes sense? It does. It uh -huh. makes a lot of sense. Yes. And I like the word you used, curated. Uh -huh. Life is not curated. Yes, it's, it's, it, we were tired of seeing that because we know that that's not how it is. Yeah. Yes, you can be hot and have a face beat and have a hot bod, but it's tiring. Uh, be a little bit real. And yes. I think that's perhaps why TikTok is so popular. Yeah, mm. it's much more relatable mm. in the essence of people just doing what they're doing. They're busy pranking their moms, their dads, their uncles. Yep. They're busy, I mean, some people are sitting on the toilet making TikToks. It's just something really? you would you do. You can do that? You can do it. that. I mean, mm. maybe terms and conditions may apply. <laughs> um, but it's much more relatable. It's If I'm watching you doing something, I'm like, yeah. oh, I do that. It's something people want to see because this is something they do and it's not like, oh, it's so unattainable. Okay. Now I'm feeling insecure about myself. Mm. I think Instagram kind of gave that with all the pretty pictures. Everyone's like, okay, cool, now we need to look pretty. We need to look a certain yeah. way. And then that's where the insecurities come where mm. I'm a model, but I'm not as good as. The one lesson I learned playing tennis back in my primary school days is there's always someone better yes. and someone worse yes. in your craft, but you are the only person that can be you. So becoming a better you is the only thing that you need to learn to do. Oof. Okay, the pearls of wisdom here. Let's I want you to take us home with this conversation. Yes. We chatted about almond milk. Yes. And I, I want to go back here again. And we were talking about, you know, just buying your own almond milk and people expecting certain characters. I would really like to know. Yes. For downtime, let's just say if somebody who is an influencer is watching you now, uh, somebody who's starting <laughs> off their journey uh, yes. in content creation, you know, the downtime and also the lack of boundaries out in public, when you want to do things with your family, uh, you know, how do you navigate that space? How do you make sure that there's a boundary that protects you and your mental health? Yeah. But also allows you to be accessible because that's what you are actually showcasing on your social media platforms. I love your question. Um, I'm going to break it down. So break it down. Downtime, super important. I think the moment you're in the limelight, you're a public figure, influencer, you start losing a lot of yourself. You know, you start consuming what other people do and you actually figure out that, hey man, I could be doing what I used to love when I was still like a normal human being. You know, yeah. now you don't have the status. So your downtime should be things that you love the most. Like my downtime, I love watching television. I love being on my phone, you know, chatting away to my hundreds context of <laughs> beautiful men. I'm joking. <laughs> but, you know, you get that just like, I just, I'm in my element, like I'm relaxed, I'm in my pyjamas, you know, mm. maybe there and there you don't, you know, you're, in, you're, you're just relaxed, you know, that's my downtime. Yeah. Um, creating the boundaries between, you know, uh, when you're with the people you love, like your family, your loved ones, um, you just need to kind of give your family the, 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 the understanding that you are a public figure. Mm. So they need to now kind of know that, okay, if I'm going to go with you, Ooh. if you don't want to take pictures, Ooh. like if they don't want them to, they need to say no. Yeah. Uh. Like if I'm going with you, you need to say no. I can't say no mm. because I'm at work. Whether I like it or not, unfortunately, in this game, <laughs> there's 24-7. Yeah. So if I'm with my family, it's my responsibility to tell my family yeah. that, listen, if we're going to go to a public setting and you know very well that people are going to uh, approach me and want pictures and you don't want that, it's on you. But I'm willing. <laughs> but also let the family know. Like, no, let I do. The, let yeah. the social media family know as well. Like, yeah. I outright tell them, if you see me in public, come say hi. Like, I'm not going to bite. Maybe I will make a TikTok <laughs> or something. But I won't bite, I promise. Okay. But, like, it's, it's nice to interact with those people. Yeah. But also there are boundaries and you can tell them, look, guys, I'm going to be out in these circumstances, rather don't. I would also make a story of like, guys, if I'm shopping for underwear, please do not come and approach me. <laughs> it's a little bit awkward, just a little bit. You know, but yeah, make the boundaries. This, is, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you for your commentary as well. And to Rushtush and Lassizwe and Kelly Kicks, you've been amazing. You've been so honest and vulnerable. That's all we could ever ask for. So thank you for empowering us with the, the truth about influences. Here it is right here in your Feel Good Breakfast show. And thank you so much for being open-minded and enjoying the humanity behind these great brands.